So if you're in the geek sphere, you've probably heard about Bill Maher's statements regarding Stan Lee and comic books. If you haven't heard, Stan Lee, the man largely responsible for Marvel Comics, died at age 95. And naturally, people were upset. The same way they are when any celebrity or public figure passes on. Anyway, in response, comedian and talk show host Bill Maher wrote a blog that railed against comic books and the culture surrounding them. This blog basically said that comics are for children, we're spending our smarts on stupid stuff, and Donald Trump could only have been elected in a country that thinks comic books are important. I'll leave the link in the description for anyone who wants to read the whole thing. But wait, there's more. After hearing that people were upset with his comments, Bill said this on Larry King. A culture that thinks that comic books and comic book movies are profound meditations on the human condition <laughs> is a dumb f***ing culture. So as someone who does in fact think that comic books and the other mediums based on them can have literary or narrative significance, I naturally interpreted Bill Maher's comments as being directed towards me and people like me. Beyond just taking this particular statement personally though, I'm making this video to address how catastrophically wrong I think Bill Maher is and explore what I feel is a more realistic factor that contributes to the social and political climate we're living in. I didn't really ever want to go here with my channel and I don't want to make this a regular thing, but I think that this particular case warrants it. My hope is that as one of the stupid people Bill is referring to, I can give a more balanced and nuanced take on what might be going on than this savvy political commentator. So strap yourself in and get ready for a little bit of a rant. I have given a name to my pain. And a different shirt and come in and vote again. Bill Maher. I guess I should probably start this off by going over how familiar I am with Bill Maher. I was first exposed to him through his documentary Religious in my younger years. As I was questioning the notions of religion and God at the time, it was entertaining to see this pure atheist perspective that called out many of the contradictions in religious texts. That being said, I remember thinking, even then, that Bill Maher was kind of a prick. He was rudely sarcastic, snarky, and he always had to have the last word. However, I found him insightful and mildly amusing, so when I learned he had his own political talk show, I naturally gave it a watch. I watched Real Time regularly for years, but as I got older and my views changed on many topics, I started to have problems with both him and his show. I've heard some say that Bill Maher is considerate of other perspectives and likes to have constructive discussions with people that oppose his views, but I think that's only partially true. Sure, I've seen him make some really salient points and have good discussions with various people over the years, but his hubris always seems to get in the way of the discussion. Like the unquestioning faith in religion he so vehemently opposes, Bill Maher seems to have that same faith in what he believes, at least as far as culture and politics are concerned. Almost everything he says in any context is spoken with a tone that says, this is the way it is, and if you disagree, you're fucking crazy or stupid. Maybe that's why he's been so successful. He's got balls, and he genuinely doesn't seem to care what people think. However, after listening to Bill for so long, his assertive ego really started to get on my nerves. I'd be listening to some point he was making, and agreeing with him for the most part, but then he'd suddenly throw out some insult that applies to most people in the country, including me. In other words, he just doesn't seem to have a lot of humility, or the ability to say, maybe I'm generalizing too much. Instead, if it's true for him, it's true for everyone else. On the other hand, the format of his show only makes this worse for me. He has a studio audience that cheers when he says what they want to hear, which is just about everything. I mean, MSNBC sticks to the truth. They, they, they don't, they don't. And they laugh and gasp at most of what his conservative guests have to say. Russia collusion. Where is the collusion? This probably only reinforces the idea that he's right and they're wrong. That doesn't seem like the best temperament or atmosphere for in-depth discussions about complex topics. Although, that's only the tip of the iceberg. The panel segments are arguably worse. A good amount of the panels on his show consist of him asking people with similar views to his own what they think about a given event, and it almost always feels like they compete for the spotlight. It's like they know they only have three minutes to get the biggest applause out of the audience, so they keep interrupting each other to achieve that. They do this so much that you can't even understand what anyone's saying sometimes. Like, to me that doesn't seem no, like, it's not a complicated it's issue. So it's third just third how you... It's 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 what they're the doing. As you can imagine, I stopped watching Bill Maher's show. In part because I just got sick of his demeanor. He's hopelessly full of himself and his show just didn't seem like a good place for balanced political discussions. Maybe that's just due to the old TV talk show format where time is money. Maybe I'd have a different perspective of Bill Maher in a long-form podcast without a live audience. Regardless, the thing that really makes me dislike him is just how plain snobby and disrespectful he appears to be. The near constant jokes and statements about how stupid, crazy, or ridiculous Americans are makes me think he's not as reasonable and objective as he appears. 
He routinely passes judgment on millions of people and acts like what he's saying is clever and hilarious. But to me, he just seems like a pretentious douche. I can understand if he's just making jokes. After all, he is a comedian. But if that is the case, then he should stop acting like a serious political commentator and just stick to the comedy. Anyway, with all of that being said, Bill's latest statement about comics and the people that value them is just another in a long line of condescending narrow-minded bullshit. And he couldn't be more wrong. Let me explain. Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. Lawrence. Putting aside my affinity for comics and the other mediums based on them, were comic books initially just cheap, disposable, ad-filled pamphlets made for kids? Yes, absolutely. However, as time went on, the medium did evolve into something that used all the same literary tools as any other quote-unquote serious literature. Comics started to contain social commentary, character studies, and even philosophical themes that went beyond bang and pow. Are there some comic books and other mediums based on them that fail to do this? Sure, but for the most part, this type of entertainment does have at least some value. The X-Men was an allegory for the civil rights movement of the 1960s. It gave readers a look into what it must be like to not be accepted by the world around you and the pros and cons of the different philosophies you might develop as a result. Spider-Man taught readers that with great power comes great responsibility, the very thing that people like Bill Maher criticize Trump for every day. The DC comics dealt with substance abuse, the ethics of vigilante justice, and so on. And that's just the superhero stuff. There are plenty of other comics that are far more grounded in real world issues. But before I get ahead of myself, let's acknowledge that Bill Maher says he's never even read a comic book. I, I don't read comic books. I didn't even read them when I was a child. So basically, he's attacking an entire medium of entertainment that he confirmed he knows nothing about. Seems like a pretty glaring hole in any argument, if you ask me. So what's his problem? If the X-Men's parallels to the Civil Rights Movement existed in a big boy book by a renowned author, would Bill Maher suddenly view that book as being significant? Is it just the pictures that are a problem for him? What do you want? In my view, comics and everything that stems from them are on the same level as any other piece of entertainment that people can enjoy and derive meaning from. As far as superheroes themselves, it may sound cheesy, but the stuff really is for everyone. A seven-year-old can like Daredevil because he wears a red suit and beats up bad guys, and I can like Daredevil for having genuinely thought-provoking themes of faith and loss. Entertainment is entertainment. Maybe Bill is just picking comics and comic book movies because they're the easiest, most popular target today. Would he be saying the same thing if, for some reason, westerns were topping the box office? I have a feeling he would. Something tells me that this is more of a criticism on people getting meaning out of entertainment of any kind. If that is the case, then why should anyone value his show? I could just as easily follow the actual news to learn what's going on in the world. I don't have to watch a 62-year-old comedian make jokes and give his arrogant take on current events. Real Time with Bill Maher is just entertainment, commenting on world events and culture, so how is that any different than a film, show, or comic book doing the same thing? Seems just a tad hypocritical to me. Speaking of being a hypocrite, I bet Bill wasn't too worried about making people stupid when he did that Iron Man 3 cameo. Kaksu. All joking aside, let me play devil's advocate for a second. I think Bill Maher is trying to say that people should be focusing their attention more on the real world and less on entertainment or escapism. Fair enough. However, I don't think he realizes that most people do live in the real world every day. They go to work, pay their taxes, provide for their families, and enjoy their various hobbies and interests where they can. Sure, there are always those people who take shit too far, the football fan who assaults a fan of another team, the guy who spends all of his money on Star Wars merchandise and can't pay his rent, but I think most people know how to balance shit like this. Just once, Bill, let's give Americans some fucking credit. When it comes to people reacting to Stan Lee's death, I think Bill might just be taking some of the things said on social media a bit too seriously. When someone says, I'm so incredibly grateful I lived in a world with Stan Lee, is Bill Maher really taking that with 100% seriousness? I feel silly having to explain this, but Bill doesn't seem to get it, so let's help him out. Things are generally over the top on social media. When someone tweets, oh my god, the shit I just took was amazing, it generally just means that they had a good shit. It doesn't mean that they were actually stupefied by the miracle that was their bowel movement. So when someone says they're grateful they lived in a world with Stan Lee, they're basically just saying that they really enjoyed his work. Furthermore, when someone talks about adulting, I guarantee it's meant in a lighthearted, exaggerated manner. I'm sure there's some assholes out there that actually mean it, but they're probably few and far between. As far as directly blaming the election of Donald Trump or any of the problems our country is facing on people who think comic books are important, that's just ridiculous. 
The same comic-loving, dumb culture that elected Trump elected Obama twice, and a good amount of them probably voted for Bernie or Hillary, too. And let's be honest here, focusing on the real world to a left-leaning talk show host like Bill Maher likely just means that you get out there and start supporting anything that's not Trump or conservatism. What if people rejected comics and started getting into the real world, but didn't support the same things he does? I'm sure he'd be singing a different fucking tune then. A big reason why people resort to escapism of any kind in the first place is because they get sick of all the noise and political bullshit, and Bill Maher is a big part of that. How people choose to spend their downtime is only part of what makes up who they are and the decisions they make. But like any complex issue, the political divide in our country is a multivaried one, and it takes more than sass and a shitty attitude to really say something meaningful about it. I'm no expert, nor do I claim to be, but I feel like I can look at this problem more objectively than this asshole can, so let me try to give my humble opinion on the current cultural divide. It's time for who do you trust? Hubba hubba hubba, money money money, who do you trust? So beyond Mars' ignorant take on a dominant form of entertainment, what really creates these stupid people he despises so much? As far as I'm concerned, we live in a time where trust in our institutions is shattered and indisputable truths are in short supply. It's gotten so bad that our divided country is seemingly living in two distinct realities, each with their own heroes, villains, values, and facts. But why is this? Why can't the United States seem to agree on anything? Well, it's complicated, and unlike Bill Maher, I don't have the gall to look down on millions of people and tell them that they're stupid. However, for the sake of expressing myself, I think one big part of it comes down to scientific fact being twisted and bent beyond recognition. In the modern world, when you're being persuaded by either side of the political spectrum, you're more often than not presented with statistics or studies that apparently prove the claims that someone is making. If there's a percentage or the word study applied to something, it just sounds more legitimate. Our scientific institutions are supposed to provide us with facts that we can use to better make decisions in policy and everyday life. Where this gets muddled is when two conflicting pieces of scientific information are presented. How can this be? For example, how can one study say that gun violence is out of control and another say that gun violence is at an all-time low? When something like this happens, the scientific process breaks down, and people seem to resort to their primal gut instinct. In other words, they fall back on belief, which undermines the whole idea of there being scientific fact. So as the average Joe who's just trying to be a rational, informed citizen, why should I believe one source over another? How do I know that the institution responsible for a given study wasn't ideologically or monetarily motivated, or that data wasn't skewed or presented incorrectly? As everyday people, we can't be very scientifically minded if we don't perform or understand the actual science, so unfortunately at some point, we're all forced to believe in certain facts. And this is where people in media from all ends of the spectrum come in. People from both sides, like Steven Crowder, Ben Shapiro, The Young Turks, Bill Maher, and many more, pick sets of apparent facts to justify what they're saying. In other words, facts now seemingly come in whichever flavor you like. It's at this point that I think a lot of people just say, fuck it, and they go with the thing that they agree with the most. So what can really be done about this? Well, being that I'm just the average guy, I don't have any concrete solutions for how we should deal with this other than to use our best judgment and try to interpret scientific data ourselves. However, the pessimist in me says that people won't usually put in the effort to do that. Which is understandable. Not everyone is a scientist. The funny part is that I've heard Bill Maher say that he thinks people just go with what they can relate to in their everyday lives and ignore the facts. He seems shocked and disgusted by this revelation, but when academia can't even decide if there's a difference between men and women, can you really blame people for doing that? I think many find that it's just easier to support something that's tied to their own experience than it is to trust some seemingly arbitrary study. Anyway, for me, when someone is 100% on board with anything, be it religion, politics, or some statistic, and they don't question it, that's a problem. So when I see someone like Bill Maher acting smug like, he knows and you don't, it just rubs me the wrong way, especially seeing as he's not a scientist. So he's taking his information on faith somewhere along the line. This type of confusing scientific climate likely contributed in some part to the election and where we are as a nation overall. Again, I'm no expert, this is just one of the biggest causes for the cultural divide I can personally think of. You have millions of people on both sides who like the facts coming out of the sources that they trust. Thus, we have a sort of new age tribalism. It almost plays out like a religious war, except we're no longer fighting over whose god is better, but whose facts are better. Which is sad when one of the goals of science is to cut through all of the flawed human biases that have plagued us for so long. So why exactly is this happening to us? To put it plainly, I don't know. Maybe I'll attempt to explore it more in another video. However, for the sake of this video, 
I do think it's simply short-sighted to lay these multi-varied issues at the feet of people who get meaning out of some form of entertainment. So when I hear Bill Maher say that Trump could only have been elected in a country that thinks comic books are important, I'm simply baffled by his choice to ignore glaring issues like this. I think I've made my point here, so let's wrap this up. If you've made it this far into the video, I'd just like to thank you for listening to me rant. I could probably keep theorizing about the cultural divide for another hour, but I think I laid out everything that pertains to Bill Maher's statement. Hopefully I've sufficiently explained why his statements about comics and people like me who value them were smug and poorly thought out. Regardless of what some snooty asshole said to most likely get attention before he goes on his holiday break, Stan Lee was instrumental in evolving the medium of comics beyond just kids, and he helped create characters that deeply resonate with a lot of people. If you're a responsible, well-rounded person, it shouldn't matter what kinds of things you enjoy. So the next time someone points their finger in your face and basically blames you for a complex cultural issue, simply say, 